Latoya. Latoya? Latoya. Yeah. Latoya. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, so listen, I wanted to I wanted to bring you on because uh, you me and you was talking in the background. And I I, I seen yeah. I seen the truck. I was like uh-huh. I was like Okay, I was like, congratulations, back in the truck. And then you was like, nah. And what caught my fancy was you said, you said, my wife and my boyfriend. Uh huh. <laughs> I I dispatch or you you work for them. So that what caught my attention. And I was like, oh man, we gotta talk. We we gotta talk. I, I know we uh I know we chopped it up before. We chopped it up before, so let's catch up, man. So so right now you're you're not driving you're not driving the truck. Driving. No, they took me out the truck. I wanna say it's been roughly seven years now. They took me out the truck because of my back. It wasn't my choice, I'll say that. <laughs> so I was snatched out the truck. Um, me and my wife have been married for going on 10 years now. And we decided that, hey, let's make a business out of it. I mean, three heads is better than one. Let's try this. And so we tried the polyamorous, liked it. So we have a boyfriend in our marriage. And he drives and she drives and they're trying they're about to buy a truck. So we'll have two trucks in case they want to split apart or drive their own separate or drive together, but that's what it is. Okay. Okay, Polly. Now I talked to a, a, a friend of mine, her name is Miss Polly. She's she was active on TikTok, but I think she's now on more so on Instagram. And I talked to her about the polyamory lifestyle. And I, I see I see a few people getting in it, dipping and dabbing in it. I'm going to ask you, what is the difference between the polyamory lifestyle or just you guys just having a threesome? I mean, what, what, what's the difference in that? tell you the difference it's like i said it's like a business so basically he gets the best of both worlds at the end of the day because he has two women of course that's every man's dream but when you look at it like if she's gone and he's here i'm satisfied if they're together she's satisfied when we get together we all satisfied so nobody is losing and when she's here with me it's me and her Nobody's jealous. No, he doesn't have to go out and cheat. He doesn't have to look for somebody else to fulfill his relationship needs because he has us. Just makes it easier. Okay, Polly. So, <laughs> uh, how did the how did the conversation start it with with you and your wife to have a polyamory relationship? Like, I mean. The, I mean, did you bring well, it up? It she like, brought it up? or No, she brought it up to me because she was like, um, she didn't know how to bring it up. Now, when people see us out in the street, they assume that she's the more manly version. And they don't look at me because I'm so small and dainty or whatever, but it's me. And they're like, how's it you? You got on a dress and she got on, but she's a tomboy. And I'm a tomboy. So a lot of times we'll be dressed alike, tennis shoes you know, sweatpants, whatever, but people still didn't look at me like that because I may have my lashes done or stuff like that. So she was like, I didn't know how to really bring it to you that um, I wanted to have um, dick, basically. Well, that's just a, a better Pretty way to much. put it. And I was like, well, it makes sense because she has a child. I have a child, so it's not like we have never. And so for me to be insensitive and to dismiss it, I wasn't dismissive. I was very open. I'm a very open person, and I'm very transparent with my life. And I tell people that all the time that in order to have anything like that to work, you must be transparent. 
it can't be y'all having sidebar conversations over to the side or whatever. It has to be all together a conversation because you're not just in a relationship with one person. You're in a relationship with two people. You're not being sneaky. So it's nothing to hide about. So when we talk, we all talk together. How did, How's the feeling separated in all of this, though? Like, I mean, I, I, okay, so as for the man, now, of course, he's not around and I can't ask. So I can only I can only ask from my point of view. So say like for example, I I I get more feelings for you than I would have for for her. Or you get you more feelings for him and how how do the feelings work? How do y'all even okay, it out? So with with our thing it's different because she was like, you're a better judge of character of people, and I trust you. I trust your insight and everything like that. So she let me pick the person. The person that I picked was somebody who I had previously had experience with when I was younger. So that led the thing. So then we brought our Carfax to the table. And for us, the Carfax was our health papers. Everybody brought their Carfax to the table. <laughs> there we go. Bring everybody every, everybody should bring a car fats to the table when y'all yes. start dating. Yes, absolutely. So there's nothing, you know what I'm saying, hidden or anything like that. Everything is out on the table. So if anything happens, you know what I'm saying, and somebody catches something, we'll know who the culprit is. You know what I mean? So it's like I said, it's just being open. And so when I brought it to him, he was kind of hesitant at first because he dealt with me first. And then she was like, well, you've dealt with him. He may, you know, have more feelings. But he debunked all of that. He was like, no. He was like, I love you because she loves you, and I love her. So at the end of the day, I feel like I'm the spinner when in actuality she's the spinner because we're both going to show her an abundance of love. So how did that conversation go when you brought that proposal to him he like like i said he was just like are you sure it took us uh it took us maybe eight or nine months to actually because i was like look this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give her your number and you have her number and y'all can talk outside of me i don't want to have any dealings when y'all are having y'all talking getting to know each other because it may be conversations or things that y'all want to know that I already know. So I'll just be a third wheel at that point. So y'all get to know each other. And then y'all re report back to me and let me know, you know, how you feel. So, like I said, eight, nine months went by, whatever, and we actually met up together. And after that, we didn't see each other. We haven't seen each other since last November. Um, he went doing his thing. She's also driving and stuff. And so she brought it back up to me. She said, well, if we're going to do this, we got to do it the right way. And I said, well, what's the right way? And she said, well, he has to stay with us. So I brought that to him. And he was really like, all right, cool, bet. I mean, it's no issue. So when he got here, I mean, of course, our kids are here. He said, well, how do y'all feel about me getting us a bigger house? And because he has two kids as well. And I said, well, you know, I don't mind. I mean, he said, well, that way, when your kids graduate, um, you can leave them your house and y'all can come to our house. Okay. I mean. So we looking at one bit, one one bit Latoya Bunch Brady over here. <laughs> so all all you guys have kids. How 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 old are the kids, and how do they feel about it? His kids are 23 and 24. Okay, they're grown. We have a son that's 24. That he, he lives with us, but he's about to go drive a truck. So he's on his way to truck driving school. And then we have a daughter that's 16 and a son that's 15. Let's let's uh, cut the grown folks out because they pretty much okay. should understand. Now, what about the kids? Mm -hmm. What about the teenagers? How do they, how do they feel about the poly? You and, and, and your wife been married for 10 years, so, of course, you, the, the young ones kind of got used to, kind of got used to the it dynamics of the family. Right. But now y'all added a third dynamic. 
How does that right. affect them? So with our dynamic is a whole lot different than a lot of people. Either none of our three kids um, that live here with us have ever had their fathers. They've never been on child support or anything like that. We we both went down to the courts and signed off that we didn't want them to be responsible because I feel like putting child support in it and things like that, it doesn't make a person want to do something. And I feel like if we have kids, you still want to take care of them. If you don't, that's on you. If you want to spend time with them, that's something different. So they've never had a man, per se, in their life at all. So bringing him in, it was different. They were like, okay, how are we supposed to act? They're asking, because me and my kids, we talk about everything. And I said, just act normal. He's just another adult in the house. If you need anything, you know, he'll, you know, do whatever he needs to do or whatever for you. And they're like, okay, so he don't want us to do anything? And I'm like, absolutely not. And if he make you feel uncomfortable, you let me know, and he'll be out the door. Okay. My kids' comfort is first first and foremost. We're bringing a third party in. And so they're like, well, where are you going to sleep at? <laughs> I was like, he'll sleep in the room with us. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, we'll meet him. So we met over Thanksgiving dinner. He drove from um, Mississippi to us on Thanksgiving. And we spent Thanksgiving together, and we actually spent the whole week together. And when he left, like a couple months after, the kids started asking about him, like, where's he at? Is he coming back? <laughs> what are you doing? Why he came back? So... They have a pretty good dynamic. I let him make his own relationship with them so that I'm not involved or so she's not involved or anything like that. But if it's a problem, then, yeah, absolutely let us know. Man, that's that's wild to hear, hear that from you because, like, what, without even being poly, like, some kids would be like, no, they ain't my daddy. Well, right, I mean, but, the discipline and all like that. They they they'll right. come with the they they'll come with the rebellious. Uh, rebellious, right? That's mm-hmm. wow. Okay, well, okay. So we sounded like <laughs> one big happy family over here. Now he's he's a truck driver. He's of course he's gone for a while. Your wife, uh, trucking, mm-hmm. and she's gone for a while. Mm-hmm. And now that you're out of trucking, you you pretty much, they're, they're both owner-operators, I take it? Right. Okay, right. so you, you're you pretty much at home booking the loads for both of them, per se. Right. I'm okay. their manager. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's what's up. Still <laughs> keeping the money. Still keeping the right. money tight. Okay. So right. are, are, you, are you, LaToya, are you afraid? Being that he is a truck driver and he's uh, accessible out there, I mean, he could. I mean, I I know you said at the beginning that he don't have to go and cheat, and he got the best of both worlds and everything. But still, he's he's a man. He's a man, right? If I was gonna be afraid, I wouldn't be in it. You can't go in with fear because I feel like this: if a person gonna do something, they gonna do it regardless. I've been with my wife for 10 years. People was like, I can't believe you let her go over the road and truck. I can't believe you let her. Do- what if she do? Well, what if? I'm at home. What if I? I feel like I have more access than they do. I'm at home. I'm at the house. I can do something and nobody would know. So you have to have trust, period. If you don't have trust, you're going to fail. So even where the point where her family was like, oh, I heard she cheated. And I was like, okay. Um, Where's your proof? Well, why do we need proof? Because I don't go off hearsay. It's not in my face. She ain't came back with nothing. We avidly go to the, we've been going to the doctor even beforehand. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like most women say, oh, I go and get my checkup. And they boast and brag about that. Oh, I go get my checkup every year and this and that. But that checkup every year is not checking you for anything. It's checking you for the bare minimum, and if you want a full test, you have to tell the doctor you want a full panel done on you, or they're yeah, not going to do it. Work up. Right. Right. So within that, out of 10 years, nothing. So if she wanted to do it, yes, condoms, yes, you know, whatever, but if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. 
I feel confident that I can be <laughs> all you want me to be plus some. You want a stripper? We'll make me a stripper. You want, it's just whatever, but you have to be open to that. And a lot of people are not open to getting out of their norm. They're lazy. They don't want to do anything adventurous. They're not trying to do nothing but this, what I'm going to do. I'm going to be lazy and lay on my back or I'm going to just let him hit it from the back. No, men want more than that. And a lot of women don't want to hear that. They want it. Give it to them. Be their fantasy. Be all they can, all you can be, plus some. Polyamory, Latoya, man, that's <laughs> wow. I yeah, uh, wow. So, so the di- so definitely the dynamics work. You was the one that that reached out to reached out to him. Did you did you mm-hmm. want it to reach out to him being the truck driver, or did you or did you do the applications for other candidates? I did have other candidates. They did not pass the test, meaning it's certain things, our lifestyle that we like. We like to travel. We like to, you know what I'm saying, go out and have fun. We may like to go out to the uh, bar every now and then. If you're not amped for that, I don't drink that often because I, I feel like I have to keep a maintain a good head for everybody. So I'm going to be the sober one. If anything pop off or anything like that, I'm going to make sure everybody get home safely. So with that, it was like, one guy told me, he said, well, if you're at home and I come home, I need a full cooked meal for breakfast. I need lunch. I need dinner. And I can cook. I cook from scratch. I cook like somebody's grandmama and I bake from scratch. So that wasn't the issue. The issue is that you're putting a requirement on me. We're not going to do requirements. Everybody in this house cooks. If you want to cook, you cook today. If she want to cook, she cooks today. It doesn't matter, but we're all going to eat because even my kids have been knowing how to cook since they were 12 years old. So I made sure that they can cook the way that I can cook because I'm not always going to be here. Okay, so that's yeah. what knocked him out. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to let you I can't cook. I, I could cook you. <laughs> hey, I could get down on some bacon and eggs, though. Oh, Jesus. And I took over the breakfast, Lord. Yeah, I, see, I don't eat breakfast like that, but I make sure that whatever they need for their truck, when it comes to food, whatever it is, um, it comes to the wipes, it comes to refilling their uh, their toilets that I got them with the little pellets or whatever, so they don't have to go into the truck stop and be nasty or whatever. I make sure they have everything they need. Latoya, thank you, man. I I appreciate the You're catch welcome. up, man. We we've been. <laughs> We've been down with We're each other. For a long time. Yeah, we've been rocking yeah. for a long, long time, man. And I do appreciate yes. I, I do appreciate the support and everything, man. No problem. No, your your phone lines and your inbox probably gonna be going crazy after this, but Yeah, yeah, because this this is the first well, this is the first time for me. I'm I'm not I'm I'm sure there probably might be others out there that's dipping and dabbing in polyamory, but yeah, this this is the first time for me to to see see truckers being involved in polyamory. Like I said, I talked to Miss, mm-hmm. I talked to Missy. That's her name, and right. she was she, she was telling talking to me about the lifestyle and everything. If I can find that mm-hmm. link, I'll go ahead and send it over to you. But but that's she was cool. telling she was telling me about it. But I seen other videos, other popular mm-hmm. uh, vlogger and and other people that was dipping and dabbing the sister wives and, and all like that. Right. So I was just kind of wondering to myself like from era to era it's it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's different now. Like my era back in the day, I mean what you guys call polyamory we call threesomes back in the day. What I'm right. saying. So I mean, but now with polyamory is just all mainstream now. Right. But then even with threesomes, you would probably have somebody that was not all the way in. They weren't all the way in a relationship with them. I think that's where the poly comes from. A threesome is like, okay, we found somebody, we messed with them, you know, whatever, but a relationship is different. The dynamic of it is different. Latoya. 
Thank you very much. I really do appreciate the time, man. You take it easy and make sure you keep everything up, man. We'll get together again Absolutely. soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You keep it up. Keep it up. The run, the the pack of tequila. I mix it all up, and I swear that I need none of them. I'm not pocketing it in a bottle while I'm in.